Blue's Clues. The first 555 to solve the puzzle will receive some of Connor's five million. Is that Edward million. Snowden talking? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> This is uh, the video he premiered today, which I have not watched, and you have not watched either. So we're not doing Instagram, we're just doing this? This okay. is the one from today, and then we can give examples of his kind of progression on Instagram afterwards so you can get an idea of where his mindset has gone to get to this point he's at now in this video he premiered today. And, and just to be totally clear to everybody watching, why are we doing this? <laughs> um, Mainly because the hi hybrid between fitness content and psychedelic content like I thought I've already been reacting to this stuff and I thought getting your insight on his mental state in terms of harm reduction who is a viable candidate for a psychedelic experience why would you want to do it like for example if you're micro dosing something like LSD a lot more harmless than an ayahuasca trip presumably yeah so you want me to give a diagnosis of whether or not this is a feasible outcome for an average person or how to avoid this or yeah, something like if you wanted to pursue something like that, what had to an ayahuasca trip? That yeah. Is. So why would you do that exactly? What kind of individual benefit from it versus perhaps be harmed? Mm -hmm. And then how do you prepare for it? Um, or and explain maybe why this happened to him? Like yeah. Reasons yeah. for this, this reaction. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But you can call me Sevenson. Dear Evan Hansen, Connor Murphy has committed suicide. But it is hard not my friend's wish that only three videos are released. And these videos contain Blue's Clues. The first 555 to solve the puzzle will receive some of Connor's 5 million remaining ghost coins. Okay, by the way, to give context, he claims he has multiple millions of Dogecoin, which is his, uh, like he's been giving away his money essentially. And like he gave away his credit card information. Now there's two factor authentication and stuff, which prevents people from just grabbing his stuff when he posted a lot. He, he posted logins to all of his social media, all of his bank accounts and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And he was screen recording him approving payment requests from people who are trying to like take money from him essentially. And he's saying here he's going to be giving away his Dogecoin, which I don't think there's any proof that he actually has this balance, but he claims that he has seven million, which now is worth what, like, I don't know, five million dollars or I actually don't, I don't follow it. Didn't it get cut in half? Or yeah, something? it got it tanked real Yeah, recently. so maybe it's worth three or four. Yeah, but it's still a lot of money. It's a ton of money. It's more money than I have. What, <laughs> what, what, what is this? The title of the video is giving away 7 million Dogecoin. This is Elon speaking. Ha ha. A musically scientific perfection. Yeah. So this is an example of some of the stuff he's been, <laughs> he's been posting in the past month here. And again, a bold claim that's probably not true. What does that even mean? A musically scientific perfection. Who knows, dude? I don't, I don't <laughs> understand what any of this means. No. What's yeah. with the Elon Musk joke? Why is that funny? <laughs> I don't, I don't get e, it. Because Elon pumps Dogecoin, I guess. But this, I don't know if this is a movie, by the way. Like, we're sort of learning about this development as we go. So we can sort of get our live reaction. But this is a... I, I honestly, I don't know if there's something wrong with my ears, but I couldn't understand a word that that was being said there. No, I'm going to turn it up and maybe play it again. But it sounded like he was giving details to how to collect his Dogecoin. But he's basing... I don't know if he's going off of the script for this movie that's premiering on September, but there's a guy in the movie named Connor Murphy who dies by suicide and leaves a note in the pocket of, or wait, here it is. Evan's classmate Connor Murphy gets a hold of one of his notes and dies by suicide with the note in his pocket, leading Connor's parents to believe it was a suicide note addressed to Evan. Soon, Evan gets caught in a complicated lie pretending to have been Connor's friend and forming a fabricated relationship with the Murphy family. And for whatever reason, Connor has been promoting this movie in his videos. So he's sort of intertwining a storyline of Jesus mixed with this vi movie that hasn't come out yet somehow. Is this a big budget movie? It's by Universal. So I guess so. Maybe I would the trailer for it has like 8 million views. So I would imagine it's pretty big, but 
coincidence that the guy's name is Connor Murphy? I would imagine so. He does not seem to think it's the case. He thinks he's involved in some capacity. But he also thinks he's Jesus, so that's not too exactly far-fetched. Yeah, so let's turn it up a bit. And basically, from what I can tell, he has altered his voice, and he's overlaying it here, too. No, I'm sure that's his real voice, man. <laughs> And uh, so talking about up. how to uh, co- get his Dogecoin based on clues he's going to be leaving for but something. But the title is Rest in Peace, Connor Murphy. I thought it was different. Or was that a different video? No, that's literally it. I'm seeing it for the first time as you, dude. What so. was the other video we just saw? There was another one that was scientifically... Oh, that's him showing it in this video. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. I guess let's start from scratch here. Are there captions? I'm going to try and turn them on. Apparently not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, good luck to YouTube trying to caption this. I know. Uh, but you can call me Sevenson. Dear Evan Hansen, Connor Murphy has committed suicide. But it is Connor Murphy's wish that only three videos are released. And these videos contain Blue's Clues. The first 555 to solve the puzzle will receive some of Connor's five. No. Is that Edward I mean, Snowden talking? Sure. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, and Connor's been doing this weird, like, Matthew McConaughey accent, too, since he's been doing these microdose trips, talking like a, uh, I don't know, Matthew McConaughey, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, no for, shit. So he has that, plus the voice alteration, and he's trying to talk about how he's not Connor Murphy, he's Connor Murph free from, I don't know, constraints of... Whatever. Hold on, and he's showing a picture of himself back when he was on roids, or is that him now? Yeah, that's an old picture. Okay. So this is what he used to look like, by the way. And T's talking about how he's going to release these clues to get his 7 million Dogecoin, because for whatever reason, giving away a bunch of crypto accomplishes some greater good. And these videos contain Blue's Clues. The first 555 to solve the puzzle will receive some of Connor's 5 million remaining ghost coin. The secret lies with Greensboro. Hashtag national pleasure. Remember I love golf. Life is a play. And we are the actors. I would like to wish you a merry 12th day of Christmas since you've heard from the last. So, he's laying out some sort of puzzle framework for i guess he's he claims he's given away two million dogecoin already which i can't imagine is true but he uh i don't know he says he likes golf which you know he does like golf (laughs) what did this have to do with him dying i don't fucking know dude that okay i'm not quite sure how to react to this because that made no sense that's yeah exactly that's why it's kind of tough but that is that's what he's laid out here in terms of he is achieving some greater good He's literally messaged me directly and said, say you're in on it or you're going to look stupid. So in on what exactly? What are you accomplishing by giving away a bunch of money in some like cryptic fashion? I'm not really sure. But if you see some of his old stuff, I'm about to jump to the Instagram here. You get some ideas of uh, what exactly this guy's mental state is. Yeah, let's react to something that shows like a more. Yeah. So I'm going to start the screen recording right now on my phone. Yeah, a, a better example of like him because I couldn't even, that wasn't even him. That was some weird voiceover. Okay, so this is an Instagram page and he posts like 50 times a day at this point, or at least when he was majorly under the influence, he was posting that much. And recently he's posted these. I'll go back to some of the more stuff before he went into the... Uh, I don't know, get help. Okay, that is just a picture, but let's see. Um, So that's one, (laughs) that's one example. (laughs) So it's just a mishmash of insanity. (laughs) 
So yeah, it's almost like unrecognizable, and he's going up to even girls in the park and doing. Like, why has he got audio overlaying audio? Good question. All right, pause that, please. please. I feel like I'm losing brain cells watching yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, you probably are. But um, yeah, he's still doing what he sort of used to do in terms of going up to girls randomly. I'm also I'm not sure if I should laugh at this because it actually looks like someone who does need some form of uh, real assistance. No, absolutely. Like here, he's talking about um, um. Actually, let's see what other ones has he posted. <laughs> So I think people can get the idea. So in New Zealand, what we would say is he's lost the plot, bro. He's yeah. totally lost the plot. Can we react to like a, a one of those YouTube videos, maybe? Sure. Where he actually makes sense. Let's find one that makes sense. Okay, so going because yeah, I I totally get. I don't think we need to see more of that. He, no, he makes no sense. Yeah, it's a bunch of nonsense, and he'll make he'll say stuff about celebrities that is not true, or you know, I don't know what the point of it is, or what he's accomplishing by that. I don't know what the point of any of that was. Um, no, Adobe Flash. I don't want to update. Fuck. I think we can confidently say that he's experiencing psychosis probably more than that yeah probably and he started this thing called prim i forgot to mention he started this thing called primisati yoga where he basically gets girls to like sit on his lap and like stare into his eyes and they just do like breathing exercises essentially and it is you know like very sexual and then he posts the the raw like actual like fucking on his only fans account yeah. So, wow. so a lot of people think this is to promote his OnlyFans to generate revenue as well, which is plausible because he is, in fact, generating revenue off of it and does promote it quite heavily. But it's above and beyond that, I think. Like, it's uh, at this point, he's just posting nonsense that has absolutely nothing to do with promotion. So, like, Connor Murphy versus Sam Harris, Joe Rogan decides if God exists. Here's an example. Why, hello, Mr. Joe Rogan. And by the way, this is not even a recent one where he's been microdosing all day long. This is him when he was sort of normal, I guess. Or at least more normal than now. Nah. And Mr. Samuel Harris. It is hard to see I am blinded by this light. But it shall be worth it if I run into a tree. It is for the good of the world. We're saving the world, everyone. So... If you don't know me, I'm a uh, Connor Murphy. Also, I'm God in every sense of the word, the metaphysical sense of the word God, and actually the material version of God, like the Christian God. Yeah, that's right, Sam. Howdy do. You thought I didn't exist, but I do. But you don't believe that now. But before I get into the plan, let me tell you a little bit of who about who I am. I am Connor Murphy. I uh, started out as a Christian, turned into an atheist because, yeah. The dogmatic Christianity of the world is a little, a little off, we could say. And then uh, recently I've had quite the spiritual awakening, and I realized, whoa! Not the biggest spiritual awakening you could have. That, whoa, uh, you're God. Crazy. Yeah. But anyway, I've been pretty crazy over the past year. He's pretty truthful so far. That was a relatively good summary of what he, like... But he's, he's also, he's also, like, actually able to... Tell the truth here. He's saying he has been crazy over the past year, mm -hmm. and he's saying you're not going to believe that I'm God, but I am God. Yeah. And there's some truth to that from like a psychedelic context. Like what he's saying isn't totally out there. You have a lot of people who have these experiences who come back and say, "I just experienced being one with all of everything. Mm -hmm. I am now God," is what yeah. they would say. But they would also say you are also God, and it seemed like he was almost saying that you were God. So essentially, the psychedelic he has experience been that to people, by the has way. he. So yeah. you can break it down into you realize on a very fundamental level, like if I'm going to relate this in a way that a layman can understand, it's it's hard because there's really very few words that accurately describe what these 
all encompassing one with everything experiences feel like. And it just, it sounds crazy and repetitive. Like this is why people, I'm trying to defend, like let's start off by defending him a little bit. Yeah. So from that angle, when you say you were God, you could actually translate that into if you believe in the Big Bang, at one point everything was part of everything. Right. And we have as much like on a taught, like if you break it down into atoms and electrons, we have as much in common with each other as we do this table. Mm. So when he says, I am God, he, people essentially mean I am the same as everything. And I essentially am you, you're me. And if you were to like zoom in with a microscope on a metaphysical level, you would see that our consciousnesses are actually shared. It's just that time is not a, how do you describe this? Time is not a linear thing. But we experience time in a linear way when we're alive. But after you're dead, time all just becomes this continuous thing where there's no past, present, or future. And I'm experiencing this life and then your life all simultaneously. But in this human experience, in order for this to actually work, you got to break it down. And like, like you know, time, how we operate, there's one thing happens after the other. Otherwise, this world would fall apart. Right. So these are the kinds of experiences you have. And whether there's any validity to that experience, like whether anything I just said actually makes sense or if it's just a really fancy thought or these are all just feelings that you have that you're trying to transition into words, which um, at that point it just falls to pieces because words can't translate the feelings. The weird thing is how he feels obligated to impart that perspective on everyone, though. Yeah. Like, it's you mentioned before how if you were truly enlightened, you wouldn't feel the need to share it with everyone and kind of prove that you've undergone this metamorphosis into, like, an enlightened being and trying to teach people how to be like you, sort of. The actual word of enlightened. Like, yeah. people who are enlightened wouldn't actually call themselves enlightened. Because yeah. I mentioned to you, the very... When you're in... When you're in that psychedelic state, you realize that the very act of saying, oh my God, I am everything, means that an actual ego persona has to voice those words, meaning your individualized self has to think those words, and the very act of thinking them and voicing them means you are no longer everything by the very fact that you are a person saying it. Yeah. Like, if you could voice, oh my God, I am God, and for it to mean anything true, then, like, everybody would have to voice it at the same time. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So from that aspect, as soon as you take any one individual and you follow the belief that if they follow the belief that they are God, in essence, it kind of takes away the whole experience. Like it nullifies the whole thing yeah. because any individual can't be God because as an individual, you are not everything. You are you. He's describing it in a framework as if your current state as the layman is suboptimal to his state too. So saying you need to get to this point if you want to be as, you know, a superior being like I am. But sort from of. a true enlightened state, the, the true like enlightened ones, yeah. meaning um, somebody who reaches a state, they would call it Satori or a Kensho awakening or any of he the... He talks about that a lot too. He does? Satori, yeah. Okay, so any of the ascended masters of old, like... Who did Ram Dass follow? Some Baba something. What was his name? See, now I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. Whatever his guru's name was, um, these are people who claim to be really channeled in to uh, the state that he claims to be channeled into. But when they're actually in that state, they not only don't have to share it with anybody. I'm actually losing my complete train of thought right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, if you go out of your way to tell everyone about how what you're doing is this better version of you and or, you know, this is something to achieve that is superior to your current state of mind, then mm -hmm. you're sort of defeating the purpose of doing it to begin with. Yeah, I had another point I was making, but I'm drawing a blank. It'll come to me. Yeah. See, I'm having a great difficulty putting this, like verbalizing it because I want to be careful not to, not to completely dismiss his experience because yeah. it does seem like he's had there, there's some truth to his experience he's just gone around translating it in a very poor way and this is largely due to like we already said somebody who already comes into it from a very egotistical standpoint um how this would look different like say somebody who wasn't so egocentric to to start with if they had the experience uh they first of all 
might have a little bit of an urge to share it because it's kind of like imagine you just discovered this new great um i don't know product that had like yeah. no side effects that gave you the best workout gains you could possibly imagine mm -hmm. would you not want to share that yeah i would yeah definitely and imagine like everyone you're sharing it with doesn't believe you and you're just like in your head you're like it's so easy you just take this thing mm. and then all of your worries are gone and like you're the most beautiful version of yourself you would want to share it Right, so it can right. be a frustrating point where I feel like he's reached that level of frustration too because he tried to share it with his family. Like I can relate. I've had those enlightened states and I wanted to share it with everybody. Hmm. And you soon realize um, you can you can actually get derailed from your mission because like your mission of wanting to share it because it's like no one no one can hear you. Yeah. It feels like you're just talking, talking a different language because no one can actually understand. And then you get to the point where it's like the only way to truly share this is to have other people you know, undergo the experience. And this is where things get interesting because even if he were to give his family an ayahuasca trip, there's a really high chance they wouldn't have the same all enlightening thing that he had because there's really, people have written books like Timothy Leary and, and uh, Richard Alpert wrote The Psychedelic Experience, which was based off the Tibetan Book of the Dead where they tried to show ways to program your psychedelic trip to reach these various states. But it largely fell on deaf ears because it seems like unless you are truly at the right point in your life to experience that, back of a better term, enlightenment, yeah. no amount of psychedelics will get you there. Like mm. you would argue you can just take a higher dose and get enlightened. Now you might just get psychosis. You really got to be at that level before you take it, which kind of translates into already um, following meditative practices and... Um, how someone could go about reaching it from a healthy perspective would probably be that they would already have an interest in meditating. Um, they'd follow some form of Eastern philosophy. And then when they had that experience, they would realize that it's not all about them. Right. So for with, I don't want to belabor the, like show too many of the videos. Cause if you really want to dig into, he's posted like hundreds of videos. So it's hard to just pick out one and summarize it all. Yeah. And I understand this is a bit unorganized, but I'm trying my best to make it palatable. To we, kind are, of... we are putting together such a good job for the editor. Like <laughs> that's essentially what this comes down to. <laughs> so yeah, so basically he hit his breaking point where he was trying to enlighten everyone around him. No one was getting it. According to him, he ends up having a mental break or staging this you know, event becomes progressively worse, gets to the point now where he is supposedly microdosing every two hours, which um, is that even possible, microdosing ayahuasca, or do you think it is a different drug entirely based on his behavior? So you got to look at tolerance, and psychedelics all are very non-addictive. They're almost anti-addictive because you build an immediate tolerance to it. For example, if you were to take ayahuasca two days in a row, the second day, yeah. you would have to take maybe twice as much to reach the same level of effects. Wait, is that accurate, though? I don't want to spew nonsense. It's accurate for LSD. Um, there are some drugs that don't have the same level of tolerance, and ayahuasca might have less of a tolerance than some of the other ones. Um, but in general, psychedelics can't be taken in, in succession like this. Um, tolerance and addiction potential. I don't know if I should dig into this. See, the thing is, ayahuasca actually uses DMT as it's, they call it the, the light, and it is DMT. And DMT, you actually don't get much of a tolerance. Like, I could smoke DMT every hour and have very little, if any, tolerance. So it's one of the rare psychedelics where you can experience it consecutively. Tolerance so of the effects do not wouldn't. build up with repeated use, and this compound can therefore be used repeatedly to there any we go. extent. Does not present a cross-tolerance with other psychedelics, meaning that after the consumption <laughs> of ayahuasca, psychedelics will not have a reduced effect. That's very interesting. That's what I thought. So uh, something like LSD will give you an instant tolerance. You mm -hmm. can't do it two days in a row, but ayahuasca might just be that rare one where you can. Hmm. But every two hours, um, the the trip lasts longer than two hours. So it would be redundant to be dosing again? At a microdose level, I would think so. Maybe it would just keep the microdose going. Um, my concern would be the monone monoamine oxidase inhibitors that are present. Like he would have to change his diet and yeah, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know if he's been eating because he actually. By the way, another thing he did, he did a forty-day fast to replicate, the, like the 
basically like going by Bible stuff and trying to replicate things. Huh. And he, so he did this 40 day fast to show, and by the way, fasting does have like legitimate health benefits, but you don't necessarily need to starve yourself for 40 days to accomplish autophagy or any of these, you know, cell repair processes. But he goes like way overboard, does this 40 day fast, loses like 50 pounds or something. Insane shows how you can survive it, which is fine, like whatever. But it's just another example of some of the stuff he's, you know, justified in his mind as, um, you know, things to pursue. So I don't even know if he is eating while he's using this stuff. Like he's clearly proven that he can go long spans of time without. Because there's, I, I, I don't know if you've researched this, there's ayahuasca diets. Like you don't eat any smoked meats. Oh, you don't, right. you're not supposed to drink beer. You couldn't mix ayahuasca with uh, stimulants and it'd be, it's because of the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Is it just uh, the tyramine component or what? what yeah, is, yeah, exactly. Okay. The, is that what it is? I think off the top of my head, I might be wrong on that. There's something that, uh, uh, let's see. Is that what's in Turkey? Um. I would be probably speaking out my ass if I said. So Starts I'm not with the T. I think you're right. Yeah. It's a tyramine. And I want, oh, that's got to be it. I would think the MAOI diet. As a result, there are no known fatalities as a result of eating foods containing tyramine with taking ayahuasca, but it's still wise to practice caution, especially. Um, yeah, the main culprits are going to be people who are on antidepressants. The right. mix of the MAOIs can cause serotonin syndrome. Okay. And people have died from taking antidepressants and ayahuasca or things like amphetamines and ayahuasca can cause that. Um, the food is a big precaution. Like they also say don't don't have caffeine, as it says there. Mm -hmm. But it is doubtful if you would actually die. It might just be a little uncomfortable. Um, but the ayahuasca diet even says stuff like, I don't even know if you can have salt. Like it's a really oh, strict wow. diet. But this is all from a traditional like shamanistic standpoint and how they've done it for centuries via the tribe. Um, if you're going to have a Westerner try ayahuasca, they're probably not going to follow it. I mean, some people do, but it's arguable if you have to follow it to that degree. Right. Um, so maybe he is taking ayahuasca every two hours. So hypothetically with this guy, like obviously you don't have a ton of context in terms of his mindset beforehand, you know, his, uh, who was guiding him on it or whatever, but you kind of get the idea that he was, you know, a very more one dimensional guy prior to the spiritual experience. Yeah. If he goes into it with everything dialed in, except for being that, you know, egocentric guy, would you still have a bad experience or what would be the outcome potentially in a, could you achieve some benefit or would it still be a bad idea? First of all, I don't think I'm an expert. I just no, want to yeah, preface yeah. it by saying that I have, I'm no expert. These drugs affect everybody in a very unique and different way. And I don't know if you really could foresee this happening from an outside perspective, because what it really looks like has happened is it's brought to the surface some form of latent condition, like perhaps schizophrenia. And keep in mind what we call schizophrenia. I was telling you this back in ancient cultures, they were revered. They were right. like the mystics. So we have now boxed all of these symptoms in like with dementia schizophrenia and some of these people actually have very different experiences we just we're obsessed with labels so we slap this they're schizophrenic it's a way for us to understand something that we can't understand mm. but i actually personally believe there's some truth to the way that they used to be viewed that they are tapping into something more and that's probably because of my own psychedelic experiences which show you this reality is actually nothing like we think it is. Hmm. Like, especially in our societies, we've really diced up and sliced this reality into a digestible format that might hold no true like efficacy to let, how do I say this in a way that doesn't sound crazy? I can't, <laughs> I'm gonna sound fucking crazy yeah. now. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I get it. It's kind of hard to just ballpark what's gonna happen now. It's so. hard, but I, I don't think that his reaction is normal. What has happened to him is a very atypical reaction. And I think he has schizophrenia is, is my, just from like a initial reaction, like knee jerk reaction, he is experiencing either a prolonged bout of psychosis, but it's more likely it's brought his schizophrenia to the surface. And then the question is, can psychedelics cause schizophrenia? And once you get to his point, can you get back to baseline ever? Because what's happening is he's, uh, I'll answer that question, but he's mixing some truth in with falsehood. Yeah. Like the whole, we are all one, there's truth to that, but it's not in the way that he's depicting it. 
So it's almost like he's very confused. It's like he got, there's a Carl Jung quote. It says, beware of unearned wisdom. And it seems like he has actually gotten injected with a dose of something spectacular. Mm -hmm. Like you can't take away that he had a spectacular experience for something to change him to the extent that it changed him. Like a total 180. Yeah. And this is a guy who actually seemed to be a normal, again, very hedonistic style lifestyle, but yeah. a, a normal by our society standards, which is, you know, to call someone sane in an insane world is no measure of sanity. But, you know. Like I'd say the average male in their 20s is not so dissimilar to him in terms of mental stability. So like he was propped up on all the success going into it, but I don't think there's a ton of individuals who've done the ayahuasca trips necessarily that are like, I don't know, like a lot of people are still as hedonistic as him just to a haven't experienced the degree of success he had at such a young age. It's almost like a warning marker to our society. I wonder if it had to do with just the way that we live. It kind of like built up, built him up to this point where he was like just a pile of dominoes ready to crash down. Um, oh, it's really hard to just answer that because i think anybody could say oh i'm not as hedonistic as connor was but it's like how many dudes still care about you know the nice cars getting girls getting tons of money blah 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 all the kind of standard wants of a young 20 something yeah, and it's our society that kind of defines what our wants and needs are and that's, yeah so does that disqualify yeah. anyone from having a positive experience i would imagine no i just but here's the thing usually when people have these experiences when they're in a healthy state of mind they reel back yeah. And our society is is very enticing to the point where it's like you can actually feel like you were enlightened, but then spend a month back in your old life and you're going to forget all of the positive lessons you might have learned. Right. So it's almost like what happened to him was so spectacular in the sense where it affected him to such a great degree that not even our society was able to snap him back and pull him back into his old ways of thinking. And um, that's not going to happen to everybody. 